Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, Jeremy Jones, the busiest man in the building. As for this match, well, we've just seen an upset, yes. But it was a mild upset, upset because Alex Bagulain is a world-class player. This would be a major upset. Matt Shetner from Norway, 31 years of age. 71st in the nine ball ranking, 64th seed. But he has been runner-up in a Euro Tour event to Victor Selinski. Right, number one, Mr. Shetner. 2021 Treviso Open, lost 9-4 in the final there. Beat Nikos Economopoulos and David Alcady on the way. So we can't completely discount his chances. And of course, winning the lag meant he got the break off. Yeah, and that lag didn't do him any favors here in the opening rack. Hit him pretty well, maybe a little too thick. Anytime you see the cue ball kind of draw one rail above the side, probably a little heavy on the one. Now Shane with a easy, pretty easy one ball, of course, but very difficult layout for the first rack. This is winner's qualification. So whoever wins this gets the rest of the day off. Whoever loses it has to win another match to get to that final 64. Okay, we're going to see some power on this two ball to get on the three. And he's, he's got the, the stroke to draw the ball underneath the five all the way back up where he's standing and kind of spin it towards the three. It's a dangerous shot if he catches the purple coming out. Could be problems. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Jeremy Jones, the soothsayer. <laughs> well, when you do things like that so often, you kind of, you kind of, they, you see them a little easier. Now, Shane, any contact here most likely kind of separates the three and the cue ball and the four. Could be tough a little bit. All right, he got a double kiss, which that's the hardest way to separate him, but he'll take it. Don't know a whole lot about his opponent. Well, I can tell you one thing. He's used to the weather here, all the snow and the cold, because he's from Trondheim in northern Norway, age 31. Matt Shetner. Okay, playing to run the cue ball behind the four and the eight. And really nice covering up the three as well. And now the purple five is causing a huge problem kicking at this ball. He's going to have to bend this. Smiles from the Norwegian player, and you got to like seeing that early. And Shane's got to bend this ball with the draw stroke. Look, he's thinking about curving around the pink four to the bottom rail and then up on the three. And another part of the game through the years is Shane never got enough credit just because of how explosive offensively he was, but can't win all those titles without doing all these little things so well. Yeah. Well. Making a little roll here with the six. Yeah, the six got a little funny. Bump the four a little funny as well. So we'll get a good look at Matt's, um, you know, technique. What he thinks about getting through the rack position play. A lot going on in this first rack. And what will be shot making later in the rack, it seems. Came through a very tight contest in his Opening match here, beat Jakob Konia from Slovakia, 9-8. Well, I'll tell you some things have really transpired on table number three, if you're watching that on the Matchroom YouTube channel. Look at that, being able to knock the six open, that's huge in this first round. Doesn't make things so difficult, but Tyler Steyer was up 7-1 to one after an early missed eight ball from Kazakis really put on a clinic and then missed a two ball up seven to one. It wasn't easy, but 
he tell you it makes it at a ooh. Didn't expect that, but uh, missed the easy two ball seven to one, and I'm not sure how much play he's had since with seven in a row from Alex Kazakis and shooting now in rack number 16 to try and close the match. And that can do something for your mental right there to lose that match. I don't think he's going to do a ton here. Yeah, just try to get the cut on the six. I always talked about it with Shane. I still think, even with all the greats today, if the ball's laid tough, I think he's still the best player. Seven has both pockets. Now he's overcut this. May get a little fortunate. We'll see. It doesn't appear so. Lost the opening rack in his first match here against Masato Yoshioka, but thereafter he was in prime form. Yeah. Mats could have used a little more out of the cue ball there, and those easy ones don't take it for granted. These tables are going to get tougher as the event goes. Oh, an overcut here, and you know, that's a little bit more from what happened on the shot prior. I mean, you're supposed to get pretty tidy on that seven coming from that miss six off of, from Shane. So as far as the match starting, how Matt's needed it with some opportunities early, but capitalizing even more important. And Van Boning will see this and think, He's not going to beat me today. Yeah, no one smelled blood better than him the last 20 years. It wasn't flawless by any means. He committed a couple of errors, but they did not cost him in the final analysis. Shane Van Boning draws first blood against Mats Schettner in this winner's qualification match at the World Nine Ball Championship. Now, on table two earlier on, Viktor Zelinski was in early trouble against Roman Hubler from the Czech Republic, but he produced when he had to. This was the winning ball for the very talented 22-year-old Polish star. In it went. He won 9-5. And afterwards, I caught up with him and he gave me his thoughts about that particular contest. Masters champion against Victor, a lot of support out there. That meant a lot of pressure, but you came through in the end. Yeah, I mean, it's, in the other hand, it's like, you know, support, but of course it's also pressure, so... Uh, but overall, it's good and happy that we can play in Poland and we have good support because it really helps me. And, yeah, I think, like, when the score was 5-5, more people came to my match and it helped me because from when I took the timeout at 5-5, uh, then I played flawless. Then again, I didn't make any mistake from that point. Alex Lyley was telling me that you're into cartography and your studies are going on at the moment. You were doing exams and all that kind of stuff last week. So that's not the ideal preparation for this, is it really? Oh, yeah, I'm still a student. Uh, yeah, I got uh, right now I'm in the middle of the examination uh, of the exam session. So, yeah, it's not easy, but um, yeah, they split I'm trying screen. to do my best and screen. spend yeah. as much as I can uh, at the pool table my time. You're the youngest ever winner of a Euro Tour event at the age of 16. You've had a lot of success in the States lately, getting very close to winning titles and winning the Las Vegas Open last year. You're the number seven seed here. Do you think you're ready for a deep run in this tournament? Yeah, I think uh, I'm ready because last year, especially my uh, visit two months ago in the US was really successful for me. But I didn't win anything big. I was like in the four finals, but I lost all of them. So hopefully here I will make it better. Well, Victor is the victor in that match anyway. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Good lad, Victor Zelinski, and there's no doubt he's a major talent, another one in that European Moscone Cup pipeline, Jeremy. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, Poland's going to have plenty of those through the years. I, I don't know if there's going to be... There might be a team with three of them on there one day, but that would be incredible. But. Um, one thing about the Polish players are they're very humble in a lot of ways and very great guys to be around and 
And no coincidence why they're probably the strongest country in the world right now, maybe. Well, the strongest performance for me on this table so far at the championship has been produced by Shane Van Boning against Masato Yoshioka yesterday. He lost the first rack, looked like losing the second. Yoshioka missed a straight in eight ball. It wasn't a certainty, but it was a, a ball he should have potted. Van Boning equalised and then broken ran in five consecutive racks. He looked so good. Yeah, and the way Shane breaks the ball is probably as hard as anyone with the cut break. But if he doesn't need, you know, ducks to get started, right? He can come. Ooh, ooh, he's gonna pay attention to that one. That one could have hung. Maybe the outer table it does. The main three tables play a little drier here, a little more slick. Thank you. So a break and run out from Shane Van Boning. Nothing new there. He leads Mats Shetner by two racks to nil. And on table three, we've had a, a major result. A major comeback. First off, though, it's over to table nine. Now, this is Mario He, who suffered a defeat in his first match, so had to win this one to remain in the event. And the Austrian supplied the victory. 9-5 over Corral of Poland. Mario still going. And this is table 16. Another Norwegian, Mike Shetner. Loho Sum against Andre Gangflo. And it was the Hong Kong player who prevailed by nine racks to five. Lots of results coming in right now. The biggest was on table three. Alexander Kazakis has completed a 9-7 win over Tyler Steyer, as Jeremy was saying, from 7-1 down. Yeah, it was a tell two stories, maybe three stories. Alex starting off real strong. Missed Back a, number three. an eight ball to go up two to zero. Scores two to zero in favor of Mr. Van Bonen. Tyler Starr put on a clinic to go up seven to, to one. And then, like I said, rattled a two ball on the side. And just kind of things changed from there. Of course, Alex had to play great regardless. Didn't really see Tyler make a ton of mistakes from there, really. Just situational pull got away from him a few times. And here's another one of those tough shots that we love to see this guy attack with. Fairly straight, but queuing off the rail, and he's got to kind of roll the ball forward. Let me quickly tell you, Jason Shaw, no doubt well rested after feeling very fatigued yesterday. He leads Tobias Bongers of Germany 2 0. shot there in perfect speed not having too much angle I don't know if he can really do much besides the 4-9 on the next shot he's gonna have a stretch as well and I'll tell you you did that Josh Filler match I got to watch quite a bit of it actually it was Michael and Phil but Josh even in the loss to me looked better uh, you know he looked uh, more rested you know, and, and, you know, of course, Josh being a favorite in that match, but it's not as big a favorite against Alex as people would think. There it is. It's one-way traffic, as many predicted it might well be. Shetner made mistakes in the first, and after that, it's been all Shane Van Boning. Busy here. Lots and lots of results. They're coming across the bottom of your screen now. Of course, we've got... Winner's qualification, loses round one, people go home today, their dream shattered. Look at that, Masiol from Poland defeating the champion of 27 years ago, Ralph Suke. Not just defeating him, crushing him 9-2. Our current score is 3-0 in favor of Mr. Van Boning. But here Mr. Van on Boning the main table, break. there's no hint of an upset. SVB 3-0 up. It's amazing how hard he can hit the cut break and not only just make the one in the side, but keep the cue ball on the table so often. Look at all these grouping on one side pretty much. And you would think the eight plays to make it a little bigger pocket for a tough combination, but 
not so much on the tighter equipment. So we'll see what what Shane wants to play. He certainly wants to attack if if he feels it's it's doable. And Massiel, he can get moving quickly and run a lot of racks. So I'm pretty sure the way Rouse played, probably had to sit in the chair quite a bit. Not out of the tournament though. And this isn't the type of shot you want to slow roll with the eight there. You want to put a little speed on this combination. So a lot of cut. And he's, you know, you don't want to hit with a high ball with a lot of speed. You're going to maybe scratch cross corner. So it's kind of like center ball. I doubt he rolls this. Now, one thing he could do is he could shoot straight through the three lightly and push the cue ball up on the back of the purple, purple five ball. Yeah, he's queuing downward. So that tells you he's probably attacking. See three rail this around and kind of stunning the cue ball below the nine, maybe? Oh, he played the combo. Nice shot. And that's all feel there, Phil. And it all just opened up as if to obey the great man. Yeah, a little careful shot here drawing off the ball, and I'm surprised he came that far back. Thought he would settle for the longer shot on the pink four, and maybe that point on the side helped him out there. I think he was going to be snookered otherwise. So a little bit of a roll on a funny shot, and a very tight pocket on the six, it looks like. So it looks like he may track this one rail up the short side for the green in the lower left. Now the key to this is don't be short with the cue ball. Well, he's not short. He's going to hope he doesn't get jacked up here. And I've seen it, you know, more often than you would think to where if he gets a look at it, he's going to make it uh, kind of like a filler, you say. That recovery shot to a distant pocket was a feature of his success against Yoshioki yesterday. A couple of really good two balls. Yeah, probably after the break as well. The one thing is when he's in form, like a lot of players would have elevated, stunned the six. They don't want to roll the ball that far right on a tough shot. When he's in form, he plays it how he feels like is correct, no matter the difficulty, and that's a scary thing. Three nil becomes four nil. And Shane Van Boning, as he did in his first match, looks every inch the defending champion. Some might say the title favorite. Now, when he won the, the championship last year, Van Boning produced an incredible comeback. 10-3 down, 1-11-10 in the last 32 against Mika Immonen. And talking of comebacks, what about this from Alexander Kazakis? Just a reminder, if you're just joining us, he was 7-1 down to US Moscow Nika player Tyler Steyer. In the end, though, Kazakis had the last laugh. This the winning nine ball, Jeremy. Yeah, and you talk about a range of emotions, a big high here for Kazakis with the comeback, but Tyler Steyer has got to play another match today to get in this final 64, so the kid's got to regroup. We're just going to hear from Alex now. Alex Kazakis, what a match, what a win. You were 7-1 down to Tyler Steyer, 9-7. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, at the beginning, I make a couple of mistakes, uh, mistakes actually, and uh, I could go, I could go probably 3-1 or 4-1 up, and uh, you know he he get advantage of it, and uh, then everything was going his way till 7-1, and then uh, I don't know, s suddenly something changed, and everything went my way. <laughs> even even my my break was not working really well. You say that, but tell the people watching back home what it's like when you're playing in a match and you're losing so big and you start to come back in the match. What's it like emotionally? 
Well, emotionally at the beginning, you're 7-1 down, you're feeling no pressure at all because you said, okay, I have nothing to lose. But you know, when you're getting close, closer and closer, you know, pressure start, start coming back again. But the, the main point is not to give up ever. Whatever the score is, even if it's 8-0 or whatever the score is, try to try to win every game and uh, you never know what's going to happen, like now. Where do you feel like your game is at? Well, uh, I can't say I'm feeling like uh, like three, four months ago, but I'm feeling pretty confident. Uh, I'm not feeling perfect, but uh, I'm very... I believe, in my, I believe in myself, so that's a good thing. Uh, we'll see what's going to happen. I don't know. You've gone deep before in this event. You're through to the last 64. What's it going to take for Alex Zakas to snap this world title off? Well, it's going to take a lot of belief, a lot of luck, and a lot of good pull for sure. <laughs> Alex, good luck in the last 64. Well done. What a smashing individual, and in that match, in terms of recovery, he was Alexander the Great. Yeah, didn't see a whole lot, like I said, from Tyler uh, that he'd like to have back, and now at 7-1, to one, he did miss a two-ball on the side, and, you know, 7-1, we can all feel that that one shot wouldn't cost you, but these matches can change like the wind, and these guys know it. That's why you can see, you can see the constant grind even with big leads and caught that a little heavy to the pocket wanted to cut it a little more the other way and he may have gotten fortunate if this ball is even close to the pocket uh, as far as the aim he can throw this ball in the frozen chain frozen. yeah uh, he should shoot away though it looks like it may be aimed a little bit high can't quite tell. Well, that tells me right there it's aimed actually probably a little low. He's going to try and bring the cube, the five ball up a little bit. I'll tell you, talk about him being all kinds of dangerous. Uh, but Lady Luck gets on his side a little bit. Watch out. <laughs> going to be upset about that. It wasn't so much he hit it too hard. It was more about the contact from the six to the seven. This is where I don't think Shane's going to get kind of, oh, I'm up for nothing. My opponent hasn't played well and go for something. He's going to stick to his guns and make Matt's earn it. Hard as nails, the composition of a champion. Yeah, for sure. Well, I wouldn't doubt, of course, Shane, even though you don't know it, he watches these other Americans play, you know, more and more as years have gone on. And I wouldn't doubt he saw that comeback from Alex Kazakis in that Tyler Steyer match. Another world champion, former world champion, Mika Eminem playing for his tournament life. Saw him this morning at breakfast. What a nice shot here. Really nice attacking shot there. Well, there it was. We were extolling the virtues of Shane Van Boning for keeping it tight and showing respect and all of that kind of stuff and taking no liberties. And in the end, it backfired because Shetner pulled off by far his best shot of the match so far. He's on the scoreboard, the Norwegian. Shane Van Berning's lead trimmed to 4-1. Yeah, you can see the age 31. Nicknamed Goldie. Not sure why. I'd like to know, though. European three-time semifinalist, so not just once he got in there, three times. So that says something about his game. And even that last bank on the eight shows you why Shane is not going to not going to get too loose here in this match. This is the bank. Length of the table. And just about accurate enough. Yeah, had a lot of overspin on the eight, which helped the bank, even though it didn't hit perfectly.
Talking about playing for your tournament life, Jeremy. Max Eberle from the USA out, beaten 9-4 by Ruben Bautista from Mexico. Billy Thorpe, another American Moscone player. 2 1 up on Chetan Chahabra. Rack number six, our current score That's is 4 to 1 in favor of Mr. Ben In Boney. a match where the loser goes Mr. home. Shekna to break. Yeah. For both those guys, Max a little more dedicated and trying to play more full time, uh, many more tournaments than it showed back home. And Billy back on the scene. I think both those guys, of course, they're trying to win. But they have to try to get back to getting comfortable in these big events again. I think that's as important as winning these matches. Okay, thin cut shot on the one here. On the slick table, if he catches this a little thick to the pocket, maybe he worries about the scratch cross side. Cut it way thick, and there's that scratch. Kind of one stroke did feel. I don't. I don't know his game, but that's not a good sign as far as like nerves and stuff. Well, he missed two balls, didn't he, in the first rack, and that one goes astray. And look at this table. You would imagine that Shane Van Burning wouldn't need any further invitation. No. There is some work though. He's got to play a nice shot from the two to the four with the two in the middle. And the five's a little pinned on the right side of the rail, but very manageable. I may have overcooked this a little. Yeah. Surprised he drew that ball for the side. I thought he would just draw it up and play the two in the lower left. And this has gotten very awkward, I think. He's going three rails around the five, the top side of the five. That's got to go a little bit. It's going to spread just enough. I think at one point there, Jeremy, he was a little concerned he might go in behind the brown seven, but it stopped in time. Yeah, and Shane's a guy that really keeps everything, you know, in his little computer up there in that brain. You could see that in the last game. After Matt's made a beautiful bank, Shane was upset not about the bank being made, but letting him to the table with misposition on the eight. And there also he kind of registered what happened from the one to the two. Back in line here, though. In his first match yesterday, this was one shot that caught him out slightly, but not today. He missed one of those. And he also very nearly overcut another and just about went in. That, though, was a no-doubter. I guess that's the miss that cut off his uh, little run of five racks, right? Would have been a sixth rack, and now in perfect line to just stop his ball for a routine seven, eight, and nine. Van Boning going about his business very efficiently indeed. If any match against any opponent in the World Nine Ball Championship can be described as routine, this is it. 5 1. And she broke seven. all kinds of technique rules, didn't he? He was jumping around on the shots. But he reached the final. Yeah, he sure did. Mauro Paez from the LA area, of course, originally from Mexico. And a longtime running mate of. Oscar Dominguez, his father, Ernesto, and that was crazy. I, I believe he played Kong Peng Chow, or who did he play in the final? Who was it? Yeah, it was Fong Peng Chow. Fong Peng Chow, yeah. And that was his second world title, if I remember. So a, a rare dry break, sorry. You said what I was going to say. Very rare dry break from Van Boning. Wow, look at that. So we've had a few slide in that you figured maybe would stand up, but these these pockets are going to kind of show their teeth more and more as matches go. And look at this. This ball got double kissed a little and still hung.
That's the deep shelves that we play on most professional tournaments. Not only Shane being in form, and the thing I got asked first as I arrived here was how does Shane come in this differently? Well, he comes in as a world champion now. He's never played the world nine ball before saying that. So in form has that title behind him. It still has a, a ton of incredible pool left in him. something about pool watch how he cues this ball even though he needs it easy he's not going to roll the ball he's going to let his tip position kind of kill the cue ball while he stays nice and aggressive with the swing now he overcut that one a little that's why the cue ball got away so probably short side on the nine he's going to pay attention to this after that overcut on the six he had earlier in the match All like a stroll in the park. The man from Rapid City, South Dakota, rapidly into a 6-1 lead. Looks like he's going to make the last 64 of this World Championship without breaking sweat. Yeah, and he's going to do that if you give him all the chances. He's going to do it most of the time when you don't give him any chances, but pretty obvious to see the young man from Norway kind of feeling the moment a little much. I don't know what the stats are. You can see 39 approaching that big 4-0 where he'll get that green jacket in the Hall of Fame and South Dakota kid. Yeah, world nine ball champion last year, of course. And before that, twice a finalist. Denied at the death in those events, but he wasn't about to be denied 10 months ago, actually. It was in April, wasn't it? Early April last year when this championship was played and he overcame Albin Auschen in the final. He's won over 100 professional titles, and that's a, a conservative estimate. Yeah, absolutely. Those are real quality professional titles. Uh, there's a lot of events we play in America that has a combination of, like, semi-pro and professional players, and who knows what the amount of wins he has there. The jewel in the crown for me, though, apart from this title, was the fact that... He's won five right. U.S. Opens. You've won one, Number. Jeremy. You know how tough it is to win one. Yeah. He's won five. Eight. Yeah, I got to the final in 99. The course, the winner's side. In Mr. Van Boning. And Johnny Mr. Archer beat me in the final. And I you know, didn't know if I was even going to get back close to winning the event. That's just how tough it is. You know, Shane is like the greats. When he reaches that final, he rarely gets beat. Strickland was that way. Fillers a lot that way now, of course. Siegel was always talked about once he got to the final, very hard to beat. What I was saying prior, though, is uh, Mats is, like I said, kind of feeling the moment a little. Certainly plays a lot better than what we've seen so far. We'll get a stat sheet here for too long. I don't know, what has he pocketed? Three balls in the match so far? It's 56 to six. Okay, that many. I would have bet the under if you told me six, but or five rather. Now he has position on the five to play either side for the six. He's looking to the near pocket. Yeah, he's 
gonna not fool around with a tight pocket going to the lower left. And this shot here, he's gotta maybe put a little inside to come up the left side rail or a hair of outside to come between the seven, eight. Either are fine. Yeah, nicely struck. be so intimidating to play against him because you know there's going to be a certain level of a performance which is very high and you have to try and exceed that and if you really look back at Shane's losses which will tell you as much about him as his wins I think when he loses it's like a one mistake two mistake and you beat him it's not really something he turns the the ball over very often so it's 7-1 here. Two more racks needed by the title holder to remain on course for a successful title defence. Over on table nine, Billy Thorpe, 6-1 up on the Indian, Jahabra. You'll be pleased to see that, Jeremy. Yeah, and I like that right there. That's what I like, going to look at it, taking really every ball for him right now. If he keeps it quality, whether they go in or not, it's huge for him making, uh, you know, getting back into it, you might say, and gaining that confidence. Another interesting score for you. Jason Shaw now 5-1 up on Tobias Bongas over on table five. The cream is coming to the top, as it always does in this World Championship, although we have seen earlier on, if you're just joining us, a setback for Joshua Filler, beaten by Alex Pagulain. Twice he was two racks in front, was the killer. But the killer, Pixie, got the last laugh. That's right. Taylor Chang with a big 9 8 win. Rack number Wayne. nine. Our current Wayne's score is 7 1 in favor of Mr. Van Barney. That final Mr. Van Barney to break. One of the fan favorites, and of course the player favorites. We'll get an update on Chris Melling. Is he in action? On the loser's qualification side. He's in action and he's on the hill. 8-5 up on Jonas Kvaldsen Hansen. Yeah, we're going to see a nice rail first shot, most likely. I think, anyways, he may jump this. Hard not to jump this, I guess. The rail first is pretty doable as well. He's going to go there. Looks like, depending on how much of the ball he catches, watch out for a little bit uh, of a scratch, maybe. Oh, he jumped over the edge. Cal. Now, come on, Matt, show us what you're capable of. Yeah, and I think he hit a little left English and actually, yeah, jumped over the edge as well. I suppose now, Jeremy, the pressure on Shetner has receded to great degree because he's got no expectations now seven one down no one's expecting him to win it's just about knocking a few balls in trying to restore some respectability to the scoreline yeah and looking ahead of you know most likely he's got to play a loser's qualification here and so some good quality swing something he can feed off of gets out here the break shot which he had a dry break in the first so he can do a few things for himself here. Yeah, he got, that was pretty touchy as well. Nice shot. Not a real big backswing. Very short, compact. Keeps it simple, it looks like. A lot of times when you're short like that, you have a pretty tidy cue ball. 
but maybe not always um, the best to come with a tough shot uh, to start the rack. Uh, hopefully we'll get to see a little more of him in these next few racks and find out about the Norwegian. Well, at least he's got a second rack on the board now, but it has to be said, Shane Van Boning still in total command. It's a great name, that, you know, Tobias Bongas. I love saying it. I could tell, Phil. Rack I've heard number it 10. before from you. Our current score is 7 to 2 in Bongers, favor of you Mr. Would say Van Boning. A, you know, maybe a little Mr. more Shekna. of a Two qualified break. player than Candela. So just like filler in my mind, Shaw looking better after some good sleep and a lot of frustrations here on the break shot for Matt Shetney. Now he may have to cue this with a little inside English. Look at uh, the break, caught it a little thin. The one hit way before the side. He may have to cue this with a little inside English and use the three to hold the cue ball for the two, I think anyways. Yeah, like that. See a big cluster around the racking area. That's a sign of that real thin hit on the one, not getting much energy into the rack. Shane's ideal here. Now he wants to draw the cue ball at least a straight in on the four. That way he doesn't have to worry about the nine, anything like that when he's moving the cue ball off the four to the five. Little draw stroke here. Pretty perfect. Let me quickly tell you on table 14, looking a little smelly for Chris Melling. He's now only 8 7 up on Jonas Kvaltsen Hansen. Okay, he's going to have to play a delicate shot from the 6 to the 7 because he can't get uh, very, very full on the 6, so it's going to be something with some type of spin. Where the cue ball's at now is a pretty good spot. Just to float the six in. Looks like he's going to come twice across. And Shane's technique really offers a little better for that type of shot rather than kind of killing the cue ball with a load of spin. Now he'll float this with a heavy right tip position. Right side. Coming around. Maybe a hair of draw as well. And it kind of floated it. Nice swing there. And this is going to get tricky. May have to play from underneath. I don't know how much angle he has here on the seven film. Not taking much time. But great camera view there. So he can get up for the eight in the short corner. And as you saw that, just cheated the pocket. Give himself a extra little bit of angle and fractions make so much difference that was center pocket and now he's one ball away from the hill I know the opposition is not exactly well known but I really like what I'm seeing from Shane Van Boning. He was a 9-2 winner in his first match yesterday, and he's on course to repeat that scoreline here today. Yeah, and he is uh, the epitome of someone that just worries about himself, and even in, you know, easy wins. So this is the format for the World Pool Championship this year. 128 players started out. It's double elimination to the last 64, then cutthroat. Single elimination from there. Winner breaks format, which I fully endorse. It makes for really interesting pool because there's always the possibility of a comeback. You need two wins to make the last 64, and Shane Van Boning is now just one win away from achieving that initial goal. And of course, when you get to the last 64, the races go up to 11 racks, which is even better for him. The final, as we know, is a race to 13. The better the player, the lengthier the race you want. Absolutely. Rack number 11. Our current score is 8-2 to two in favor of Mr. Van Boning. 
Mr. Van Boning to break on the hill. Wow, incredible smash there. A reasonable shot on the two. And may look like uh, this two gets down. Pretty natural getting on the three, the four in the lower corner, the five hanging in the side. So we may have seen the last of Matt Shetney from Norway, at least in this match. From the very first rack, it looked as though Shane Van Boning was going to have an untroubled passage. And that's exactly how it's worked out. Shetney missed a couple of pots in the opener. Van Boning got over the line, then broke and ran three consecutive racks, and from there, the writing was on the wall in capital letters. And you can see him not taking anything for granted. It's just kind of inspecting getting from the five to the six that gets him to the seven. Play it a few ways. Doesn't want to play short side on the seven. It's not the worst thing in the world just because of where the six is at. It's very natural to come a couple rails where he's standing now for the seven in the upper left. Sometimes that's the best play just because when the ball wants to move naturally, your touch is better. Everything seems to make sense pretty easily. So he's going to hold to play that short side shot on the seven. Main thing here is Phil stay off the rail with the cue ball. As long as he's off the rail, he should be able to work back for the nine. And he's going to want that to settle. So this and take the rest of the day off. Was it ever in doubt? SVB playing some very nice pool indeed. 9-2 in the first round.